there are some lies in our science books. I taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the baby. You know why? Now, experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting we are steel. Recording. Then I would be a Welcome to the Hypothetical to Institute, the a podcast about, about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. I'm Cam. Sorry, I was just adjusting the levels on the fly here. Sure. Like a... I'll produce a producer pants robo. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the Engineer. Buddy. Old engineer pants robo. I'm the glue of this whole operation. Don't you forget it. So, robo, what are we talking about today, Mr. Glue? Uh, we're talking... I can't remember. No. We're talking about Tesla? Yep. Uh, Nikolai, Nikola, sorry. Mm, Keep wanting to say Nikolai. Not talking about the cars. Not talking about cars. I did come across a Tesla conspiracy, and I was like, "Ooh, juicy!" And then, like three minutes into the video of their these two guys prattling on about sponsors, I realised that they're going to talk about the car. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, this is actually kind of interesting," because I was like, "You know, there's a reason. There's a whole thing behind this car." I think it was electric, electric car conspiracies and stuff. Right. It's like it's not really relevant. I'm short on time. So I don't watch it. See, yeah. uh, is it like Hyundai or one of those car manufacturers from overseas has announced that they're going to electrify their whole fleet by like 2025 20, or 2030 or something? Hmm. Like it's a really popular car in Australia as well. So they're like, it's just going to over upheave the Australian car market because you're not going to buy, be able to get petrol versions of these cars anymore mm. that everyone likes. There you go. It's good. The Elantra maybe. Mm -hmm. The Hyundai car. If, we, if we're just doing some car talk before we get into the podcast, there's this one car out on at the moment that's got uh, Billy Eilish's bad guy mm -hmm. yeah. as the thing. And you know, at the end, it says like the car name, like the Nissan Elantra or whatever. And then it goes, duh. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that song, but I don't like the duh part. No. And also, that's like, cuts, it cuts off the lyrics of the song right at the bit about having bruised knees. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, congratulations to Billie Eilish for winning the Hottest 100. Yeah. The first solo female artist. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hmm. Uh, so we're talking about Tesla. Yep. And she was also on the list like five times or something. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. And we're also going to talk about Royal Rife. Yeah. And we're, I think, uh, Salty, you've got a little grab bag of mad scientists as yeah, well. So, a few little things. Folks, it's a mad scientist special. It is a mad scientist special. From the trio of mad science men, the Hypothetical Institute, that can be our new tagline. Yeah. Sure. Before we begin, I would like to thank our Patreons, but especially our Cook thirty three dollars sponsor, T -t 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 Tammy. Nailed thank it. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, who do you want to start with, Tesla or Rife? Let's do Tesla. All right. Who was Tesla? Um, <laughs> so I've done any research. Who what? was he? This is <laughs> <laughs> serious. This is, is he your the car guy. This is your topic. <laughs> This, so is, this is your whole thing. The CEO of the Tesla Car Corporation, <laughs> Nikola Tesla. Have you seriously done no research? No, I've done research okay. into very specific things about Tesla. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, same as me, actually. Uh, he was a scientist. Yeah, he was, well, an, in, he was an inventor. Uh, I think there's like a idea that he's an unfairly treated inventor by the... Mainstream, yes. Mm. He, so, seems, he seems to be everyone's alt science hero, right? Yeah, so he... Um, was kind of had a, a bit of a patchwork of education and um, never really, uh, he worked really hard, but also people worry that he worked too hard um, and through his studies and everything. And he, I think he had a few um, people suggested he might have had OCD, 
um, or some other mental health issues throughout the throughout his career, which I guess impacted his career and and um, further down the track. I think he went a little bit nuts. He put the mad in mad scientist. Yeah, yeah. Um, fell in love with a pigeon. Yep. At some point, um, said, uh, and I haven't got the quote on hand, but it was basically, I love this pigeon like a man loves a woman, and the pigeon loves me, uh, and as long as this pigeon lives, I'll, I'll be living too. So, um, it also, uh, oh, been there. The, the theories that he, we, he talked about building a death ray, and um, there's theories of many sort of other uh, technologies that he invented that, you know, the government had kept under wraps. Mm. Um, but he had invented a lot of uh, sort of arc light technology, AC technology, worked for um, Edison in the famous Edison factory. Uh, and I think he left, and they're not really sure why he left, um, but I think the theories are that he had invented some technology that would help the Edison because they couldn't do low wattage stuff or something. Mm. And so he invented this, this light that could do it, and then they just say, oh, we don't, we're not going to do that anymore. We just buy it from someone else because he was that was like the whole AC versus DC yeah battle right of yeah. which was going to end up being the stand for electricity mm. and what is the standard AC alternating yeah. current yeah but he was all about DC right no I think when he, he invented, was on his own I think he invented AC right well he sort of invented it so that's where he gets like a, he has this martyrdom thing in the science world was like oh he really invented. AC, but other people get the credit. And yeah. Like, maybe you really invented radio, but other people get the credit. That sort of yeah, Mar- Marconi, Marconi gets the credit, but yeah. he invented... So, But these other people did invent stuff before him <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. He almost invented X-rays. He kind of accidentally invented X-rays. Just He just blasted someone with a bunch of X-rays once. Yeah, and then like, <laughs> and then like two weeks later, someone announced that invented X-rays, and he's like, oh... Uh, oh, I think I kind of did that. Yeah, I was randomly blasting people yeah. with X-rays. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's like, hey, standing against that wall, let me shoot you with this stuff. Look, these skeletons in the wall. <laughs> but it was just, it was at the point where all of this invention is happening. It's like heaps of people are working on the same stuff. Yeah. Mm. So it's all, you know, it was, a, it was all speeding up because there was a lot of, I guess it's easy. The world was changing. Yeah, the world was changing. It's easier to invent AC. Electricity when it hasn't been invented yet. Yeah. Um, a lot of theoretical. Events. It's easy to invent the next big thing that's not here yet. <laughs> You're gonna just invent something today, Cam? No, I'm just saying it is easy though. Have you guys ever invented anything? No, but it's hard to invent things now. It was easy to invent electricity. It's like just put a kite out in a thunderstorm. <laughs> that was um, all they had to do. Imagine the bloke who invented fire. Again, you just have to wait for things to catch on fire. Yeah. And you've invented it. Good work, Thog. Do you think that's what happened? Lightning struck and caught, started a fire and some caveman was like, oh, sick. Yeah, I invented that. He didn't like go, hmm, what happens if I rub these sticks together? It's pretty cool. What if I just keep doing it? And he just keeps doing it. What if I do it faster and then <laughs> fire starts? Do you think that's more likely or more likely that lightning struck and set fire to something? The latter. And they went and put stick in it and were like, whoa. Yeah. But I guess also, you got a lot of free time. I don't think they really had Twitter then, did they? No. no. So yeah, well, yeah. They how didn't they? have their fucking phone telling them at the end of the week how much time they'd spent looking at it. Does your phone tell you that? Yeah. I wish it would stop. You could probably turn that off, right? Yeah, probably. You'd definitely turn that off. But um, one, one week I'm hoping it'll be like, your viewing time was down. I'll be like, yeah, that's right. I'm escaping your, your system, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how easy that is. You can set, I know on my phone, I can set timers for apps. Like, okay, I'm only going to spend one hour on, on Facebook. And then it happens. You're like, ah, it's kind of enjoying that. So you go into the settings and turn it off <laughs> every time. Um, so he didn't invent AC, but he made it easy for it to use to be widespread. Right. Um, he also invented radio-controlled boats to hoon around in. That's pretty fun. Uh, induction to hoon around in, like man-sized well, ones. No, hoon around no. with. Three little 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 toys to hoon around in. Yeah. Um, induction motor, radio, uh, cool things you see when you go to science works or travelling science exhibitions that make your hair stand on end. Right. He was all up in that. Tesla coil. Yep, that's what that is. Yep. Is that a Tesla coil? Yeah. Uh, Tesla coil's the one that makes lightning. Yeah, okay, yeah. 
I think that is also the one with the dome and you put your hand on the dome yeah, and your hair yeah. stands up. Yeah. I think that's it. But if you crank that up to like 11, yeah. tss, that's when you get like the lightning coming out. Um, that's when you play a prank on the bully. It's cool. Crank yeah, it up. That's <laughs> um, Induction motor. Did I say that one? Uh, so a lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of electri- electricity transmitting mm. things. But also a lot of things that he patented that weren't really anything. Um, and that's kind of leads to the theory of like, oh, what were they keeping secret? Uh, he was working on a ray gun, death ray. Yeah, so this is my favourite thing. He didn't even patent that though. No. He just would always go on about his death ray. And this is like when he's going crazy as well. Yeah. He's like, I've got a death ray. I think he was maybe hoping someone to be like, can I buy your death ray? But I don't think anyone did. He shopped it around to, I think, like the US and Slovakia. Um, I think that's where he's from or, or whatever the country was. It's from time. Yugoslavia. Well... I'm Yugoslavia. terrible with geography and history. Eventually from Yugoslavia. Yeah. Uh, and China and stuff. But I don't think anyone wanted it because no. it wasn't anything at that point. Yeah. And we have real guns already. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing, like doing fine without real guns. Rolling in his grave going, of all the things that I got credit for, it's all these cooked people saying that I made a death ray that's like wiping out people. But him and he was really keen to get that out there. Yeah. But he's like, I could have been known for being the DC electricity guy. Yeah. yeah. AC. AC electricity guy, but instead I'm the death ray guy. Yeah. Ray. <laughs> I really shouldn't have leaned to that in my yeah. lean into that. <laughs> you think was like was Tesla and Faraday around at the same time? Don't know. Faraday of the Faraday cage? Don't know. Because do you think they and might have the Faraday school kidnapping? The what? No. Um, do you think Faraday was his neighbour and he's just like, stop blasting me? <laughs> yeah, what if they were like mortal enemies and the Tesla coil was actually his death ray in development that you would lightning bolt people with and Faraday's like, I'm going to build a protection against this. <laughs> My neighbour keeps blasting me. <laughs> so they were, go- they were going to go to battle and Tesla was going to have his death ray and Faraday come out in like a chainmail suit. And he's like, ah. Um. So going back to, I guess, his, his issues in earlier years, he uh, got addicted to gambling for a while there, lost yeah. his scholarship. Um, uh, yeah, so that Mugs was his, game. Yep, Mugs game. So, like, I don't know. I feel like you're super smart. Don't get addicted to gambling. No, or get addicted to being a winner at gambling. Yep, yep. <laughs> with, with your brain. If you're so smart, you should be able to crack the system. Yeah. yeah. Put half on red, half on black. <laughs> <laughs> Easy as that. <laughs> <coughs> um, he was also uh, flirted with eugenics you, a little bit. Oh, Tesla! Come uh, on, mate. He said, um, "We must. The trend of opinion amongst among eugenicists is that we make we must make marriage more difficult. Certainly, no one who is not a desirable parent should be permitted to produce progeny. Uh, produce progeny is kind of a fun thing to say. A century from now, it'll no more occur to a normal person to." to mate with a person eugenically unfit than to marry a habitual criminal. <laughs> um, but he was also uh, pretty uh, a feminist in his own right. Commented on the ills of the social subservience of women and the struggle of women towards gender equality and indicated that humanity's future would be run by, quotation marks, queen bees. You probably read a lot into that. Uh, he believed that women would become the dominant sex in the future. There you go. He was predicting Beyonce is what you're saying. Mm. She ran the world. Mm. Um, so, the, and part of the big conspiracy around him, once he's kind of done all this stuff and, and died, the FBI swoops in, takes all his stuff. takes all his gear, and people are like you know what are they what are they trying to cover up? I feel like it's the death ray. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, he's been going on and on about yeah. a death ray. They're like, well, let's just. There's no harm in picking this stuff up. Mm. Um, but the the fun thing or the, the the interesting thing is it was John G. Trump that was uh, tasked with sorting through all the files and working out if he uh, had a death ray or not. Mm. Um, John Maybe G- working out if he had a sneaky little time machine that he could Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, have, you, have you got gear on that? No. Uh, so we, talk, we did that on one of our very talked, first episodes, yeah. I'm sure. We've talked about the Trump, Trump having a time machine and this is where he got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the John Tidor is all related to that, which is the internet time traveller. Um, but John G. Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, uh, I if people haven't read the quote about it, where he, where Donald Trump talks about as smart as uncle was, have you read that recently? No, oh, see. look up Donald Trump uncle quote. If you haven't, like it, once a month I look it up and just enjoy it. 
give us the gist of the quote, perhaps? Oh, uh, hang on, I'll bring well, it you up. Can, you could even it's, read it to it's us. Pre- it's, it's pretty long, so I'm probably going to lose. Are we going to hear a Donald Trump impression right now, or are you just not going to I am not try. doing that. No, no. Uncle. Fake news. I don't Oof. know. Oof. That was Robbo doing that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this quote is so bad that Snopes have done a, like, is this a real quote? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Um, just loading. How's the interference going to be with it right next to the phone? That'll be fine. Look, having nuclear, my uncle was a great professor and scientist and engineer, Dr. John Trump at MIT. Good genes, very good genes, okay? Very smart. The Wharton School of Finance, very good, very smart. You know, if you're a conservative Republican, if we're a liberal, if like, okay, if I ran as a liberal Democrat, they would say I'm one of the smartest people anywhere in the world. It's true. But when you're a conservative Republican, they try, oh, do they do a number? That's why I always start off. Went to Wharton. Was a good student. Went there. Went there. Did this. Built a fortune. You know I have to give my, like, credentials all the time because we're a little disadvantaged. But you look at the nuclear deal, the thing that really bothers me, it would have been so easy. And it's not as important as these lives. Nuclear is powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago, the power, and that was 35 years ago, he would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought? But when you look at what's going on with the four prisoners, now it used to be three, now it's four. But when it was three, and even now, I would have said it's all in the messenger, fellas. And it is, fellas, because you know they don't. They haven't figured out the women are smarter right now than the men. So you know it's going to take them about 100, another 150 years. But the Persians are great negotiators. The Iranians are great negotiators. So they, they just killed us. They just killed us. Tesla was right. The women. <laughs> it's a weird tie into Tesla there. Um, yeah. So his uncle told him something in that in that, in that quote mm. the like feds, about nuclear power. Yeah, it was very powerful. Mm. Sometimes when there's mad scientists, they just have to go in and do a little clean up. Yeah. I was reading an article today about a mad scientist in New Zealand. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the fish man. Are you familiar with the fish bloke? Not off the top of my dome. There's, there was some crazy old communist in New Zealand. Mm. Not a, really a scientist. Mm. Uh, but he kept on releasing uh, foreign fish into the lakes and rivers of New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like thousands and thousands of fish like irreversibly changed the ecosystem of New Zealand. Yeah. New Zealand, I guess one of the, the, the positive parts of the country is it's very untouched by other other ecosystems mm. so like it's quite a delicate balance yeah so you know like norm- slight change normally when like an exotic species is introduced it's because like the government has decided to do it yeah and they're like let's bring in rabbits to yeah. deal with this other thing and then they're like whoops yeah this was just a guy yeah who was like i'm gonna release thousands of fish into this lake and then sometimes like those fish would eat too much of the other fish so he's like all right i need to get some of these other fish in there as well where's he getting his fish from He's, he, probably, he's probably got a fish guy. He was. He did have fish guys, but he was mm. also he'd like come into the country with like pockets full of fish eggs. Oh yeah. And he had. All, but the point is, he had all of these fish tanks in his uh, like house. Yeah. Like huge vats where he was breeding fish, and when he died, the New Zealand feds had to come in and like kill all the fish. They had right. to Destroy the evidence. The Ministry, Just like Tesla. the Ministry of <laughs> Agriculture and Fisheries, I imagine it was, who are fairly fairly strict in their own, in their own way. Yeah. Um, certainly not like feds. My uh, brother-in-law was picked up uh, by them when he was on his boat, a little cruiser boat. Too many pippies? Uh, well, no, they, he was cruising around the thing. I think he was going fishing or something. But he, there's, it wasn't obviously a fishing boat that he was on. Like It's just a little like fun little cruiser. Mm. And they pulled him over and they're like, oh, you don't look like a fisherman, but we thought we'd pull you over anyway. <laughs> He's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Some city's got a new boat that looks a lot more like a fisherman's boat. All right. Um, the fisheries in Australia is pretty strict as well. Yeah. Like up in Queensland, there's like tilapia in all the dams and lakes and stuff, which are a pest hmm. introduced. And if you catch one, you're not allowed to take it and eat it. You have to kill it and to leave it on the shore in a bin. Right. That's odd. So like a message to the other tilapia. I think hmm. it's, well, I think it's odd that you like if you catch it, you're not allowed to take it and eat it, considering like it's a fish that's used in heaps of recipes overseas and stuff. Yeah, okay. 
Like, what are they? I don't want people getting the taste for it. Well, I think the justification is <laughs> if you like clean it at home and and rinse stuff down the sink, you're potentially going to rinse eggs or something down the sink yeah. that's going to get back into the waterways. How about you can take it and eat it, but you chuck your rubbish in the bin? Yeah. What are the What are they trying to stop us from finding out about these delicious tilapia recipes? Yeah, I don't know. Real question here. Yeah. The Morton Bay bug conspiracy. Maybe we're going to eat and go, man, this would be better in Morton Bay bug recipes. Yeah. The big bug's going to get all annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Back yeah. Back to Tesla. Back to Tesla. Um, Good shoey, though. Where were we? A shoey full of delicious New like Zealand it. lake water. Um, yeah. He, oh, sorry. The, the FBI took all his files. It took all his files. Um, apparently, it had beef with John Trump previously, anyway. So apparently, and I couldn't verify this with a second source, but he called John Trump an idiot during their their lives. This is one of I understand from the president. This is one of the smartest blokes. Yes. Um, so yeah, he called him an idiot, and the, then there's theories of Trump. This Trump guy moved in and like destroyed a lot of the documents to like stuff you, Tesla. Yeah. No one's going to find out about it. You're sick death ray now. You're <laughs> going to be remembered for your pigeon loving. I'm going to spread that rumor. Um, the files were released 2016, between 2016 and 2018 by the FBI. They're on the FBI vault. I don't think they really said anything we didn't know. There um, is, there was one good file in the FBI vault, uh, which was not actually one of Tesla's ones. I think this was maybe in the uh, Tesla. Uh, like extras file, mm. but it was from a uh, newsletter, the Interplanetary Session newsletter, published in June 14, 1957, uh, which claims that Tesla was from Venus. Oh, yeah. He was a Venusian mm. and that he'd been uh, brought here by the Venusians to Yugoslavia and set set up with Mr. and Mrs. Tesla. Mm. So he was actually a woman? Because uh, me and men are from Mars. Oh, of course. From Venus. <laughs> mm. Who knows? That does explain his woman will become the dominant species. Yeah. He's seeding us. There you go. So um, that was in the FBI vault. Because, mm. you know, they, they do have, like, a lot of that sort of material in there. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff online. It's like, FBI files reveal. That is, that happens a lot. Where FBI, like, because the FBI, one of the things they do is they collate, they grab all the information, and they put it on file, and then then they release it, and people think that that's the FBI admitting something. Hmm. It's not at all. It's just this thing that exists that someone re- wrote down. Yeah. The FBI just they're just like the what is that the collector of this? Yeah. They're at, just the messenger. At some point, like at the FBI, they're like, we need to keep track of everyone who says that Nikola Tesla was a Venusian just in case they got a killing spree. Mm. And if we don't have this newsletter in the thing, we're going to get yelled at. It's like, why didn't you know about the Venusians? Yeah. When someone says, I've killed everyone because Nikola Tesla was a Venusian, it's like, why didn't we hear about this before? Well, yeah. we had it on file in the crazy file. Yeah. <laughs> we were across it. We just didn't pay it any mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, well, that's all I have on Tesla. He was a a very, very clever inventor, a genius, but also a little bit cooked. Yeah. I was disappointed to discover that uh, the famous photo of him in, like, the coil room Mm. with the lightning all around him was fake. Yeah. It was a double exposure. Uh, Still, though. It's still... It's a pretty cool photo. Yeah. It's like, also, Tesla, don't be a pussy. (laughs) (laughs) He was too... Too, pr- too proud to use a Faraday cage. Yeah. It's like, fuck that Faraday guy. <laughs> Let me redo that one. Oh, retracting the P word. Yeah. What, what, what would oh, you... Yeah. Tesla, don't be a coward. <laughs> Just sit in the lightning. Yeah. Get in a Faraday cage. Get over it. Get over <laughs> your beef with Faraday. A couple of other things that apparently he invented that never got made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Earthquake machine. Oh, yep. He uh, had a thing that had a massive steam-powered mechanical oscillator that went around and around. Apparently, when he was testing it out, his building, his New York lab started shaking super violently. So he turned the power up a bit more and then all the machines around him started flying around. So worried that the house was going to fall down, he smashed it with a hammer. Okay. (laughs) Smashed the machine with a hammer to turn it off. Instead uh, of just like turning it off. Yeah. (laughs) 
If you hadn't yet invented the off switch. <laughs> so, yeah. Also the inventor of the off button. Yeah. <laughs> this is what the original hammers were called, <laughs> off buttons. Uh, th- the thought camera. Oh, yeah. This is pretty cool. Like, this is like, I guess, not not real, but the concept behind it is cool. So Tesla thought, he apparently told a newspaper reporter that he became convinced that a definite image formed in the thought, in thought, by reflex action, produced a corresponding image on the retina. Mm. Because if you can see something in your mind, it must be happening in your optical nerves. Mm. So if you had a specific type of camera that could photograph the retina, you'd be able to photograph someone's thoughts. Mm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, If this can be done successfully, then the objects imagined by a person could clearly be reflected on the screen as they are formed. And in this way, every thought of the individual could be read. Our minds would then indeed be like open books. Once you close your eyes. Yeah. 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 I don't... I don't know that would work. No. Tesla. I don't think that's how that works. There's like, this is a movie based on something very similar where they like someone who gets murdered, they take their eyeballs and like the last thing they saw is imprinted in like the back of their eyes. Oh yeah. That's and cool. And they take that picture and extrapolate clues. Yeah. Enhance. From yeah. Happened. Yeah. That's Region cool. Region three, enhance. <laughs> What's that movie? I can't remember. I bet it was eighties. Oh, I don't think it was. I don't think it was that old. Really? I might have to maybe check this out. Maybe 90s, 2000s? Mm. I'll, I'll find out what it was. 2010s maybe even. Cool. He also apparently all, invented... All decades after the 80s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he apparently also invented an electric-powered supersonic airship. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Was the person in the eyeball, the murderer, wearing hypercolour? Oh, <laughs> that might nail it down. That'll nail it down, the, the, definitely. What, yeah. what decade would that be then, Cam? That's better. What? It would be after the 80s. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Probably 85 to... No. Onwards. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, anything else on Tesla? Nah. I think there's probably more gear in there, in these little nooks and crannies of Tesla, but... It was, apparently it was big on vibrations. Mm. This is what people say anyway. Mm. And this, you could use vibrations to do things. And so is our next uh, topic... Is he? I saw what you were doing there. Yeah. Was he big on vibrations to do things? Tesla? Yeah. I don't know. I saw a bunch of people saying he was. Well, he, okay. built, he built an oscillating machine to trigger earthquakes. Yeah, I guess And that's... he also thought you could trigger tidal waves by blasting heaps of explosives out in the ocean. Okay. No, fair play. I sort of think right. our conspiracy was like, why are the numbers 3, 6, and 9, and 51 so important? It's like cause Tesla worked out that if you vibrated at those frequencies whatever those frequencies are i yeah. don't know if three is a frequency <laughs> uh you could like do something right it's like righto but what you were really doing was trying to set up our next segment yeah which i didn't really need to do we could have just said uh let's take a break and come back and talk about royal rife <laughs> We're back. Uh, we'll talk about uh, this bloke in a sec. Yeah, Royal Rife. Royal Rife. But first, let's talk about uh, briefly about optography, which we were discussing at the end of the last segment. Not by the name, though. What's... No. So we've looked it up. Mm. Taking photos of people's eyes to, eyes see, what to see what was the last thing they saw before they died. Mm. And it's a real thing, sort of. So <laughs> uh, a scientist called Kuhn... He's a German bloke. Mm-hmm. Wilhelm Kuhn. I could have... You know what? I could have just guessed his name was Wilhelm. <laughs> um, he devised a system for testing this out, mm-hmm. whereby he took a rabbit and uh, fixed it so it was looking out a window with bars. Right. And then they put like a hood over its head and left that for a few minutes to you know, build up whatever in your eyes. Yeah. Then they pulled the hood off. The rabbit's like, gets a look out of the bars and then whoosh, right. they chop the head off and then they took a photo of the eye right. and then in the photo of the eye, they could see the bars looking at like a photo in the photo of the eyes. They could see the bars. It wasn't mm. just a reflection. It was mm. imprinted in there. 
Okay. And so then all of these people were like, yeah, let's solve some murders. So there's a bunch of cases where they were like, make sure you get a photo of the eyes. And then not, it never worked. Because yeah. it only works for like a high contrast sort of image. Mm. And you've got to do it right away. You can't right. just rock up a few hours later. It's Basically, it only works if you're chopping the person's head off. If you say, like, if so, if you look into a bright light and then close your eyes, it's that same concept. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. But, um, yeah, they, 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 try, they talked about trying it on Jack the Ripper. They did it. There's a bunch of cases where they were like, let's take How some photos. How would they do it on Jack the Ripper? They don't know who I realized he no, shot the victims. The victims oh. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. They'll take photos of the victim's eyes and they'll be like, there he is. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Th- but you just get a silhouette, which is probably more yeah. than what they've got. But then again, you just get a silhouette, but yeah, it's a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> or you get um, a silhouette and it's like, that's just like all the drawings of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a coat and a top hat. Um, Jack the Ripper, I know we've talked about this before, but it still kind of blows my mind. Five victims. Yeah. Not that many in the greatest game. Yeah, but at the time. Yeah. Uh, Ah, I don't know. Context. Yeah, yeah. Still though. Mm. So that's optography. Uh, Shall we talk about Royal Rife? Yeah. Who's double R? Uh, He was another inventor. Uh, Triple R. Royal Raymond Rife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good point. He did invent some proper stuff. Such as? Uh, high magnification time-lapse cine micrography, mm-hmm. which is uh, taking time-lapse uh, movies of microbes. Cool. Oh, yeah. So he nailed that one. Yeah. And then he was like, let's cure cancer with vibrations. Mm. He never actually said he could cure cancer. What did he say? He said, let's vibrate the shit out of some cells mm. and... It's curing something. Yeah. Mm. So what... So it, his theory was, yeah, frequency, sound frequency and vibrations can impact cells. Yeah. Mm. So he, he had a he had a beam. Mm. It was a ray device. Mm-hmm. But unlike Tesla, this was a life ray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he reckoned he'd found the... Like the vibration rate at which you could uh, kill various pathogenic organisms. Right. And so devitalizing disease organisms in living tissue. I'm not saying I'm curing cancer. I'm just saying I'm devitalizing mm. these dodgy, dodgy so, bits. So from there, people have started creating and selling rife machines, which are basically seen as um, pseudoscience. Uh, there's a pyramid scheme that, that kind of went through, I think, the 80s in America where you, I think, guess you'd have to buy a Rife machine and sell two or whatever. Right. Um, ripping a lot of people off. Still happening now. Rife uh, machines are still doing the rounds. Yeah, so it should just say he... No one could ever replicate this, even at the time. And he, he died without any money. And, like, it was a, just completely discredited. Mm. But that doesn't stop people in the modern day. No. Um, there's quite a big Rife community in Australia. Uh, Tell us more. Well, there's a story in, uh, that I read in 2009. I didn't read it in 2009. I found it from them. In the Sydney Morning Herald um, about someone who got caught up uh, by a company called Electromed. Um, that sounds legit. This guy, he rang, he rang an 1800 number that he found in Nexus magazine, yep. which we've talked about before. Um, it's a personal electrotherapy machine to treat his father's cancer but could be tuned to frequencies that would cure his own chronic fatigue syndrome and his mother's arthritis. I wouldn't normally fall for something like, that, like this, but you have to understand we were desperate. Um, it came in a small black box with flashing lights and wiring and two nylon pads and a copy of the book, The Cancer Cure That Worked, 50 Years of Suppression, by an American investigative journalist, that's in quotation marks, Barry Lins. Um Didn't really work. Uh, his, his father passed away soon after. Um, in the same story, they talk about a New Zealand case where a, a small child was being treated in, uh, by radiotherapy uh, for cancer of the jaw, but then his family removed him and took him to um, the Rainbow Health Clinic in Rotorua to be treated with a rife machine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he later died in a clinic in Tijuana, Mexico, after his parents sold their house and embarked on a futile around the world search for alternative cure. Um, his former doctor said he basically had a 60 to 70 to 70 percent chance of a cure with conventional therapy. 
uh, and um, you said he had other patients that had been caught up in the same thing and reduced to a horrendous condition. Uh, they at the time, the Electronics Australia magazine um, did a <coughs> analysis on the Rife machine that they bought off, off the website, uh, and it contained fifteen dollars worth of equipment. A nine volt battery, some wiring, a switch, a timer, and two short lengths of copper tubing. Uh, the electrical current delivered was almost undetectable and unable to penetrate the skin. It was a vibrating. <sighs> was it? Yeah, it was a vibrating their, their atoms or whatever. Yeah. Well, hard to say. Doesn't seem like it was. Mm. Um, I found a re- rebuttal to this article on the um, rife.de. What was interesting is both rife. The two Australian websites, the one that sells these machines hmm. was um, it's electromagnetic, electromed.de and hmm. there's rife.de, both German, German um, hosted. Hmm. The rife.de one is dissociating themselves and going through this article and saying, this is nothing to do with rife. The electromed claim to cure arthritis, nothing to do with, with us. The ad taken out was by someone claiming to be related to us and we're not related. Well, um, so someone else took out an ad for them. Uh, That's it was, nice. It was very, un- it was very unclear what their issue was. So then they got pedantic to the point was, um, I just copied a little bit of their rebuttal. Uh, this paragraph establishes um, he'd already given up on medicine. Um, he told he had no chance and might not even survive for winter, as it is claimed to be winter. David could not have been given more than about six months to live. In Australia, winter is in the middle of the year. Yep, that's right. So they, True facts. You might not survive till Christmas, but they said it was winter. Yeah, little explain it for our American listeners. So it's not really, <laughs> it's not really clear why that, like, the doctor said he was going to die soon. He died soon. Mm. They're trying to dispute the timeline somehow, but it's mm. like it seems a really mm. anyway. They're really dissociating themselves from the mm. um, the whole thing. The whole thing. Uh, I went to the Electromed website. They don't make any claims anymore. Um, about uh, medical conditions. How do they securing? sell the machines? Well, they used to make claims, it seems. Yeah. The website... What is on the website now? Is it just you can buy this machine that does nothing? Um, yeah, it just says this is a machine. It's a personal... What do they call it? A personal electronic therapy device. Um, the It's interesting that the website's clearly been updated since 2009 to take away medical claims. Mm. The actual website itself hasn't been updated since the 90s. Yeah. Uh, they use a very good starry night background, black with white dots. Lovely. Um, <coughs> lots of neon bright blues and, and horrible fonts. Yep. Uh, you know, if I say the word GeoCities, you're probably about right. Um, I downloaded the, the brochure they had and it had a contact. Um, it was Connoisseur PTY Limited Australia. Uh, they're based in Oatlands. I tried to find more information. I, I kind of ran out of time about this company, but um, I jumped over to the Rife Forum. This is fucking investigator from Woodward and Bernstein <laughs> over here. Um, and the Rife Forum's in a bit of strife. Bit of strife over at Rife. Bit of strife over at Rife because mm. Yahoo Groups has been taken down and that's oh, where they were no. doing oh. their information. Um, Peter Walker is an Australian guy that seems to be the, the head of this forum. He did a Christmas video where he's just standing in front of a Christmas tree awkwardly and spent 30 minutes saying that the forum was going to go down because of Yahoo Groups and they were going to get it back up again. Um, but the community, there's still, the forums there seem to be pretty active still. Got some v bulletin going. They have got that now. Oh, thank God. Um, seems to be pretty active still, uh, but it's not really clear how many units are being sold. You saw a, <coughs> an unboxing, didn't you, Cam? I did. I didn't, it was a tough watch. As uh, one of the commenters notes, did I just watch two minutes of someone taking tape off a box? <laughs> I don't know if they'd fully grasped. I think the unboxing video, part of the point is you've got to get to the point, right? Mm, I don't know. Salty? Is the tape removal important in an unboxing video? Uh, well, when I made mine, my recent one, mm. I, when I was editing it, I realised that I did take a lot of time cutting the tape and I just chopped all that out in the mm. end. Mm. So we were talking about this before we were recording. Whether is there a fetish thing involved in unboxing videos? I don't know if there is. Maybe some people like the sound of tape coming off a box. I guess the, someone did comment on that. I think the, the maker of the video commented on that complaint and said uh, some this, people like the tape. Yeah, he's like this is important, and then he hit hashtag ASMR, oh. which a lot of people say, and a lot of people enjoy, not for fetish reasons. Yeah. 
an equal proportion, I, I would say, do enjoy it for fetish reasons. Oh, Robbo, you're going to get us in trouble with the ASMR community. Are they, the, are they quite like, hey, we're not, this is not a fetish thing, right? Is that the... I think so. But then surely isn't there the fetish ones who are like, I want to be in this community. Don't disclude me because yeah, like, yeah. I'm it's, in it's it to a, get okay. fucking boners. <laughs> it's okay to have a fetish. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> should, I think part of the... Pro- home camp. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, Marcha. with proper unboxing videos, like with tech products and things, I think the point is maybe to show off the packaging or whatever. It's all, you know, it's all yeah. well done. Mm. This is just a shitty box yeah, yeah. with a fake... <laughs> box inside it <laughs> that's got like a couple bucks of leds tacked onto the side yeah. but yeah I, I did watch that i also watched oh, some it's like a homesteaders video where they were um showing off their solar powered rife machine but it's just because they got a solar panel on their house <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so technically it's solar powered. everything in your house is solar powered yeah. <laughs> you got a solar powered tv but then, like, the sad part was, like, the, you know, like yeah, we're treating little Jamie with this. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> little Jamie, you dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, the, yeah, the sad, the tragedy here. Anyway, here's a little quip. <laughs> Have you seen the ads on TV for the revitive thing for old people? No. Where it's, like, they, it's a little thing you put on the ground, you put your feet on it, and it, like, vibrates. Oh, yeah. Feet seen- and stuff to help circulation. Yeah, yeah. It's being like plugged by Alf Stewart. He does the ads oh, yeah. for them, but they make sure that he's like this. This may help, yeah, with yeah. such and such. Not like it does. It's probably pretty nice. Yeah, but do you think it's a similar thing? That's actually just like. Uh, I think that sounds more like it might work. If it's like, but they're not claiming it cure to cure cancer. It's just a nice soothing feeling on your helps old, your old achy bones. Yeah. Well, I think it might help your circulation. Mm. But that's actually that's actually vi- like that's actually causing a vibration, yeah. rather than saying we're p- putting vibrations through you and mm. you're not actually doing anything. Mm. Another thing that's advertised on TV a lot, and I've seen it in a shop, is the pain eraser. Have you seen that? I have not. It's like a it looks like a chunky pen, and you put it. So you oh yeah, yeah. You, you put it there and click the the button. Yeah. And it's supposed to make the pain go away. That is just an ultimate placebo, right? Uh, well, yeah, well, I believe so. Yeah. I when we were in the, I was in the shop and they were like, "Oh, we've got these," and I was like, "How does it work?" And they're like, "I was like, oh, is it like a tent, like a, you know, tens machines? Yeah. That do like electric pulses. I used one on my back when I had a really sore back. Yeah. I was like, oh, is it like a tens machine? Do you put batteries in it and it like goes and zaps your things? He's like, "No, no, it's just got a quartz crystal in the end, and you click it." Um, like what's, what's the clicking doing though? I think the clicking is just distracting you from the pain, right? Well, it, it is supposed to be like a electrostatic charge that it creates yeah, okay. through the quartz crystal mm-hmm. Which to erase your pain. I don't think it's scientifically possible. No. But what is scientifically possible is that placebo does help. Yeah. Like placebos are proven to work. So in a way it does work, just not how they're saying. There yeah. is a pen you can get to help with pain though. He's just talking about it. It's called a vape pen, baby, ah. with a little bit of sticky icky. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Vape Shop. Uh, vape Shop is popping up everywhere. There's a massive one next to my comic book store. Yeah, right. Cool. I think it's called like Vape Nation. There's like something. four in Footscray all of a sudden. Are they selling just the like the juice, the vape pens with the juice, or are they selling a vape pen I can use in other ways? I think you can use them. I think you can buy juice. I don't want juice. I don't want to smoke cigarettes. You want a vaporizer. I, I, I want no, vape- no, but you can, you can buy juice with, with marijuana in it. Oh, interesting. And use that in those vape pens. It's good to know for... But not probably not in the ones in Footscray. Yeah. It's the same, same, same system. It's good information for our listeners. Yeah. yeah. Or you who seem to want to know about it. But wouldn't that be illegal? Yeah. yeah it's a crime. So why so, are they selling it in mainstream shops in Footscray? Well, because it's the same, it's the same, <laughs> same stuff, same premise as the the tobacco, the nicotine one. Yeah, it's just got marijuana, THC, and CBD in there. Yeah, but that's illegal. Yeah, they're not selling the they're selling the device. They're not selling the liquid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, surely you can't go buy a weed liquid in no, Footscray. No, no, but you like, can buy the device at a dispenser weed liquid, yeah. and then you buy the weed liquid from a third party. Yeah, from yeah. some dodgy bikey. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or the dark web. You don't know who it is. Yeah. Um, it's anyway. a dodgy bikey with a computer. <laughs> yeah. uh, massive shoey. What are we talking about? Royal Rife. Yeah. Isn't that big a shoey? Oh, um, so I did actually come across some research. It's a shoey full of bong water. Um, so there's a, a company called His, Histosonics. Here he goes again. And did you get their ABN? Did you track them down? <laughs> was, this, was this quite a famous... Um, they've just closed a $54 million series of uh, equity funding. Wait, what the fuck? Um, are, they, are they doing rife machines? Well, they're developing ultrasound-powered technology to fight cancer. Um, that sounds like a real thing, though. Their technology uses sound energy to liquefy and destroy cancerous tumours without affecting surrounding tissue. Branded as robotically-assisted sonic therapy... Or rest. rest. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like they've gone out of their way to spell something when you say it out loud. But they have it. No, it's just rest. It sounds awful. <laughs> uh, the technology called Histotripsy combines advanced robotics, imaging, and sensor technology to exploit microscopic air bubbles that naturally exist in tissue. All the little bits and pieces I, I looked up to try and sort of work out how legitimate this is suggests that yes, technology to like vibrate cells. On, on a molecular level or something can work mm. theoretically I don't know if anyone's really doing it I don't I, this might be another bloody Theranos thing where yeah are they just, using machine learning to do this yeah. <laughs> um, but there are there is research going into it at the moment and, and so I guess that the rife the theory is probably true in some way there is some basis in fact but these people that are trying to sell little electrode boxes off the internet mm. are certainly not that no. Because do they not break down like kidney stones and stuff with vibrations and yeah, stuff? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Ultrasound, you know, yeah. does stuff. Yeah. It breaks up like bruises and stuff, right? If you've got like a solid bruise, it helps with that, I think. Right. Don't Soft know. tissue. But I don't think they've ever really worked out how to get through bone. So right. certain cancers it won't work on. Hmm. And I, but I think they do do some similar things with like prostate cancer with this just kind of fleshy stuff around it. Right. I uh, found on a YouTube comment, though, someone that said, not to put a damper on things oh, or no. stir anything, or anything up, last year I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I healed myself with 40, 432 hertz and the nine tones Ooh. of creation. And today I am cancer-free. It's hard to believe that the FDA approved their machine because they were other doctors that invented machines that cure cancer and they were suppressed. I smell a red flag, even though this is TED Talk. I watched a TED Talk from the lady at Histonics. Right. Yeah. TEDx, sorry. The inferior version <laughs> of TED. Um, <laughs> even though this is TED Talk, that's just my opinion. Much gratitude and appreciation to a new way of healing. Frequency is the way to go. Let us continue to awaken billions and plant seeds for the future selves in higher consciousness. Let love conquer all our differences. Namaste. Do you let a full stop con? Conqueror's bloody paragraphs, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Jesus. Um, apparently, Jesus C. Olang Jr. Uh, cured himself with the bloody 432. Yeah, and the vibrations of creation. You can look up on YouTube as well. You can get rife, different rife frequencies. Uh, I put up one on for a little bit. It was weird because I thought it was going to be a proper video. I didn't, this is the start of my research. And it had a, uh, uh, I'd say maybe Minecraft or Second Life designed looking character sitting like in a stone temple. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's going to be, this character's going to be talking with a robot voice. Yeah. But like just sitting there as this frequency played on YouTube. We're just listening to binaural beats and lo-fi. It's very similar. Study sounds. very similar. And there's a whole playlist of like different, different frequencies. Should we try and build a Rife machine? I think it's very easy, right? You just 15 bucks worth of electronics. Yeah, yeah. you just to do whatever and put just it in a box. Down a J car. The one that, that Cam, we watched the unboxing, the actual machine kind of looked cool. Yeah, sort of. It looked like, I mean, they'd gone to some trouble to put some ports on it. Yeah, and there's some fun looking buttons and screens. Mm. I don't think it did anything. Mm. Is that it for Rife? I think that's all I got. You want to no. hear about a couple of like super cooked scientists? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's a bit of a, uh, I've got a, I guess, a bit of a, a gross warning All right. on these. Uh, I'd say escalating each one. 
Each one's grosser than a the last. A bit grosser than the last. So uh-huh. if you get to one that's a little bit almost too gross, yeah. dip out. The last one, I mean, the last one's probably not as gross as the second one. Anyway. You haven't ordered these very well, then. Yeah. The bloke called William Buckland, who was around in the 1700s. Yep. Very, very gross time to be around. 1784 to 1856. All of these guys are old-timey guys, by the way. Yeah. He was uh, the first... Man to pen a complete description of a fossilized dinosaur. Mm-hmm. So he has like a pretty pr- uh, impressive place in science, I guess. Mm-hmm. The Megalosaurus, he was the first one to do that. But in That's his- a big one, isn't it? Well, mega. It's mega. Why would mm. you s- wouldn't you start with one of the little baby ones? Maybe they didn't have the little baby one at that point. Right. Um, in his spare time, fun, however, he was a man who was insisted on dining on everything. Oh, yeah, and we do mean everything, including roast hedgehog, potted ostrich, panthers, porpoises, puppies, mm-hmm. bat urine. Not the actual bat though. No, just its urine. Garden- you would have eaten bat though, right? Yeah, Probably garden yeah. moles. Hang on, can we just Robo Robo as a foodie? Can you just? Yell out when he's gone too far and what he's eating. Well, actually, it says garden moles, though, were apparently too far. He wouldn't eat a garden mole. Okay. I can't imagine as much meat on a garden mole. Mm, don't know. But apparently, his most out there gastronomic achievement was he ate the shrunken heart of Louis the Fourteenth. <laughs> That's great. Just popped it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine him going like into the museum, like it's me, famous scientist, dinosaur guy. Yeah, show me the heart. <laughs> well, you're a famous scientist. We'll let you. He's like yank. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? A distinction that arguably overshadows his account of Megalosaurus. <laughs> I'm the dinosaur guy. Now you're the guy who ate that heart. You ate the king's heart. Let's face it. Let's face it. If you. Had the opportunity to eat, who was it, Louis? Louis the 14th. 14th. Your little tiny heart was there looking like a little delicious piece of jerky. Yeah. And you, it popped into your mind like, oh, I could eat this. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I, if I was going to eat this, now would be the right time. Like, Would you eat it, Robert? Oh, I think the the power of thought would overcome me and I'd have to. I'd have yeah. to, like, I'd have to do this now. I've Just thought Louis about the 14th it. or would you eat the sunken hearts of any of the other Louis? Uh, I'd do another Louis. Look, any, any nobility... Yeah, uh, you wouldn't need just some. At least it was cursed. Yeah. If you if you're bringing me a cursed nobility heart, and yeah. don't trick me. Okay, no. We'll I don't want to be tricked into eating a cursed heart. I um visited Melrose Abbey in Scotland mm. when I was over there, and on the grounds there's a little concrete thing on the ground, which is where Robert the Bruce's heart is apparently buried. Oh. Would you try and flip that open? <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's one of those jerky ground pots. Uh, okay, the next guy is getting... Oh, just as opposed to too far or not too far. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If you're going to eat one animal, what's to say a hedgehog isn't too far? Yeah, fair or enough. a porpoise or whatever. Or a dog. Or a, a dog. puppy. Kid. Yeah. Or the heart of a king. Or the heart of the a heart king. Of a king. Uh, next guy uh, who gets a bit gross. Mm-hmm. Stubbins Firth. Okay. It was around 1784 to 1820. University of Pennsylvania re- Pennsylvania researcher who was fixated with uh, yellow fever. Mm. And he was out, set out to prove that yellow fever wasn't contagious. Uh, so the extent that he went to to prove this <laughs> was quite extreme. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Aimed with only a trusty blade... And his desire to find the truth. Mm. He first sliced open his arms and smeared vomit from yellow fever patients into the wounds. Mm -hmm. When that made no difference. He ate one of their hearts. He poured vomit into his eyes. Huh. Drank some of the vomit. Fried the vomit and breathed in the fumes. Okay. Why not fry the vomit and eat it rather than just drinking? Well, because when you're frying it, it, you're you're changing the chemical properties and making it more... um, like a gas, right. you mean it gaseous? All right. In his final act of madness, mm-hmm. covered himself with blood, urine, and saliva for infect- infected patients. 
he ultimately proved his theory <laughs> insofar as he didn't get sick. Yep. Though, uh, they think that mostly that's taken because mostly that he didn't get sick because he took all the samples from patients who are really far along in the fever right. when they're not contagious anymore anyway. So it turns out this is just a fetish thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so No judgment. No judgment. In other words, yeah, he swallowed vomit but didn't actually really shed any new light on the disease because it's not contagious at that point. Anyway, third guy, Paraclesis. 1493 to 1541. This must be a little further back. He's only got one name on the donor. So Paraclesis was a learned man of the Renaissance Mm -hmm. who earned a doctorate in medicine from the University of Ferrara in the early 16th century. He's now seen as the father of modern toxicology. Mm Mm-hmm. What did he do, though? Also a practicing physician, botanist, and occultist. Uh, yeah, you got to get into the occult. Yeah. So he was convinced that he could create a tiny living homunculus, like a little, little man. Okay, it's fun. By keeping semen in a warm place and feeding it blood. Yeah, that's sort of how you make a little man anyway. Hmm. So he would... He, left instructions for any others who might wish to try it in the future. Okay. And believe that this method was the genesis of wood nymphs and giants. Can you send her a link? I'll find one. Cool. Not to try. Sure. So, yeah, apparently it was a bit odd. Yeah. But he's still the father of modern toxicology, but also thought he could create a little man by... Did he call his little man modern toxicology? <laughs> That's why he's, a, the he's like got them yeah. on a technicality. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I people feel, were cooked. They were. I feel like the further back you go, the easier it is to be like the inventor of something huge, but also mm. have done something really weird. Yeah. Like by the time you get to Megalosaurus times, yeah, they're like you're the you're the hard guy. You, I asked the question earlier, but no one responded. Have you guys ever invented anything? I don't think so. No, Cam. I mean, probably like a dumb game in primary school. Right. It doesn't really count, though, does it? Yeah. What? Are, oh, I feel like. Do you think salty? So wants, wants to set us up to asking what he's invented. Yeah, yeah. I invented pasta with custard. Well, pasta no, with you, custard. No, yeah. That's not an invention. Little custard sauce. That's yeah, I'm that's, drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's can's been hitting the vape. <laughs> <laughs> what did you invent, salty? Um, I come up with the idea of the video doorbell. Did you? Like long before video doorbells were a thing. Oh. Really? Yeah. I don't know. When 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 did you come up with this? Before Back to the Future? Back Didn't have video doorbells in that? I don't know. But you've only been able to buy video doorbells in the recent, like, five to ten years. Sure. And, like, 20-something years ago, I reckon, I come up with the idea. Mm. In the 90s? In... When was it? Yeah, late 90s. I'm going to say. Video doorbells have been around for a long time. Like, nah. Not like the ones we've got today, but... Nah. Not the one I invented. <laughs> There's nothing like it. All right. Uh, so Salty's legacy is going to be the guy that claimed he invented the video <laughs> doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> Probably decades after they were invented. Nah. Okay, um, Robbo's looking up the video doorbells. All I get is this dude in 2013 that was on Shark Tank that invented well, like with- a, a smart doorbell that... Probably just sells your data to someone. <laughs> uh, Jamie Simonoff. So if you beat him. Yeah, it was before that. Yeah, this was 2013. So like, I don't want to know about this guy. Google's just getting worse and worse, I reckon. Yeah. so hard to find things on Google. But yeah, anyway, at the time I did some extensive research on what was available in terms of doorbells that had cameras integrated in them and there wasn't anything. Mm. Um, the first... Patent. Are you ready? What year are you claiming? Oh, I don't know. Like pre-2000? Nah, 1992. Uh, by Richard Von Bauer. Patented a video doorbell system. Right. Well, I didn't know about it, so I still invented it. <laughs> it's just a video intercom. Yeah. Anyway. My actual idea wasn't a doorbell anyway. It was more of a video oh, yeah. peephole. Right. <laughs> Like a camera? Like a hidden camera. <laughs> like instead of a peephole that you have to shove your eye up against to see out, you would just press a button and a little LCD screen would show you what's on the other side of the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Do they have those? No. Yeah, yeah. no, that technology exists. Well, it didn't at the time. So I'm saying I didn't invent it yesterday. All right. It's something that I come up with years and years and years ago. All right, all right, all right. And all right. it didn't exist. Okay. And obviously, I didn't have the resources or the fucking backing to. You didn't have the resources to write it on an envelope and mail it to yourself. You don't have to do that, mate. You do. It's integral. <laughs> you'd be a millionaire <laughs> now if you'd done that. Uh, folks, where can they find us online? Uh, I don't know. Twitter.com slash hypothepod. That's one. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Spotify, all those things. Yeah. Uh, Robo, where they can find you? Uh, oh, we're on Patreon. At Ale of a Time and Ale of a Time.com. I also invented a phone case with a branding flag for journalists to use at press conferences. Oh, yeah, you did invent that one. Yeah, yeah. I made a prototype. Should try and sell that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, Instead we're of giving it away to our. I think because the problem was microphone technology is kind of caught up because there was a period there where microphones weren't able to be plugged into iPhones mm. without a sort of one adapter or yeah. one particular microphone, and a lot of journalists. I don't think real. Oh, I know this. Didn't realize that because I'd see. I'd go to press conferences and have a regular microphone plugged into their iPhone, and iPhones are actually pretty good at picking up audio mm. in that circumstance as a voice recorder. So they'd be recording just the phone. Yeah, the microphone. Or holding them. Sure. Yeah. Or or thinking they were plugging it and getting audio from the, the microphone, or just holding their phone underneath their microphone. Yeah. So the microphone flag was on display, but they were it wasn't plugged into anything. Yeah. Classic. So yeah, your idea was. Just to put the flag right on the phone. Yeah. Advertise the company. Still pretty good. Yeah. Good idea. Uh, Salty, where can they find you? Uh, at Saltmarsh Invents on Twitter. <laughs> uh, no, at Saltmarsh on Twitter and Instagram. And just Saltmarsh Illustration on Facebook. Check out Toe Hider on Patreon if you want or don't. And you can find me at Sex Nahama on Twitter. Gather around me for my other podcast. And also check out my radio show on 3CR. Thursdays at 4.30, yeah, nah, pass around. Have, they, have we said where you can find you, Robbo? Yeah, yeah, we did Robbo oh. first. Don't right worry. at the top. Okay. How's the new show going? Good. We're, um, we've done two episodes now with Jeff Sparrow and Emmy Bevancy. Mm-hmm. We're going to interview a Hypothepod listener oh. next week, Jason Wilson. Oh, there you go. He's just dropped a, a couple of banger articles. About Nazis. Yeah. Check it out. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Don't worry about a thing Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians I said don't worry about a thing Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs Don't worry about a thing Except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia. I said, don't worry about a thing. I accept. You can definitely hear John Lennon say, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever. Ooh, don't worry about a thing. Except not only did Bush do 9 11, but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which. Let's not forget where all the aliens are Don't worry